Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys everything I've made during summer of 2024. It has been a little while since I posted on this channel and I do apologize. Life has just been really crazy recently, but I've been having a really fun summer, spending a lot of time outside with friends and family and just doing a little bit less sewing than I usually would. But I'm excited to get back on track and start filming some new videos again for you guys. So let me show you the pieces I've made so far this summer. Okay, the first thing I have to show you guys is this cute little beach set I made recently. I recently got back from vacation and I wanted a beach cover-up. So before I left, I quickly sewed this little beach cover-up in about 24 hours before I left for my trip. The bottom is just a self-drafted sarong style skirt that ties on one side. And the top is this tie front top. It's by a pattern making company called Gallia Couture on Etsy. And this is their Sevilla top. I sewed it up in a size six. It was really easy to make. I did make some modifications just because I was so short on time and I was short on fabric. The pattern instructions show you how to make adjustable straps, but rather than doing that, I just made fixed straps because I didn't really have time to fiddle around with making adjustable straps. I did fully line the top so it's super opaque. I didn't bother lining the sarong skirt because I'm only ever gonna wear the skirt on top of a bathing suit. It does show a lot of skin, so it's not really something I would wear without a bathing suit underneath, but overall I'm super happy with this little set. It was really easy to make and it was fun to sew something new for my trip. If I had had a little bit more fabric, I probably could have designed this sarong skirt a little bit better. It's a little narrow, so I think if I ever made a sarong style skirt again, I would definitely make it a little bit wider, but on the whole, I love how this looks. It's super cute. It was really functional and it was just fun to sew something so easy. This fabric is an Indian block printed cotton I bought from an Etsy shop called The Block Prints. I'll make sure to link it below and I think it's such a fun print. I love this printed fabric. It's got tigers on it. They alternate going upwards and downwards and then it's got these stripes on it with the red and then this corally orange color. It's kind of a color scheme I wouldn't normally go for, but I thought it would be a fun thing to kind of play around with for a swimsuit cover up because when you're throwing it on on top of a swimsuit, you don't really have to worry about matching it with the rest of your wardrobe. So this was a super fun, really easy sew, and yeah, I'm happy to have this one in my wardrobe. Okay, next up, I made this pretty green silky dress, and I made it from McCall's 8525, and it's one of those dresses that's better seen on versus on the hanger. It's got this hoop detail in the front where you kind of gather all your fabric around this hoop and then it flows into a flowing skirt. So I think that's really cute. On the back of the top, it closes behind your neck using this little hook and eye closure. And the back of the skirt has a zipper included. So that's how you put the dress on. And I sewed it up in this really pretty uh, rayon fabric. And this is actually a really fine, really shiny rayon fabric. And in my opinion, it actually looks a lot like silk. One thing I will say about this fabric is that it wrinkles so easily. You might even just be able to tell from it hanging up here on the hanger. So I don't really love that. I think this would be a hard dress to kind of pack with me and take somewhere. I think it has to be perfectly steamed and pressed before I go out. Otherwise, I don't think it looks very good. In terms of the design of this dress, I really like it in theory. I made it up in a size 14, which usually corresponds well with my body measurements. And I think it fits pretty well but there's something a little bit awkward about the way it kind of all sweeps to one side, gathers in the ring, and then flows onto the skirt. The skirt is just a lot of weight to just be attached by the ring. And I also just find the cut near the front boob is a little bit borderline for me. If it was any shorter, it would be way too short. So I think the fit is not absolutely perfect. If I made it again, I could probably make some modifications to get a bit of a better fit. The other thing I didn't love about this pattern is that everything is finished with bias tape. So you have a lot of kind of raw edges at the bottom of the top, at the top of the skirt, around the armholes, and all of those areas are finished with bias tape. And I just find bias tape to be really fiddly, especially when you're doing it on larger areas like that. So that wasn't really my favorite seam finish. And the dress is not lined. So I think overall this project was okay. I kind of wanted a quick palette cleanser when I went to make this, but it was more time intensive than I thought it would be because of the slippery fabric and because of the fact that everything was bias finished. So it definitely wasn't super quick. 
I think if I ever wanted to make this again, I could adjust the fit a little bit to get a better result and maybe I would go ahead and add a lining and then some of these raw seams could be finished with a lining instead of having to finish all of them with bias tape. So overall I was maybe slightly disappointed with this project. I'd seen lots of other people making this McCall's 8525 pattern and having beautiful results. So that's what inspired me to make this. So I think maybe I was just a bit disappointed compared to what they were able to make, but overall definitely still a nice project and I'll see when I have the opportunity to wear this next. Okay, so next up is this halter top. I made it from a 1970s pattern. It was Simplicity 5555. And this is one of those vintage patterns that Simplicity recently re-released on their website. So they're reprinting these vintage patterns, which makes them easier to buy. And I'd had my eye on this for a while. I kind of wanted an easy, fun halter top for the summer. And I had this Blackbird Fabrics bamboo rib knit in my stash. So I thought I would give it a go. And this is the result. It's a really, really simple pattern. You could honestly probably draft something similar yourself. One of the downsides of this pattern is that it only comes in one size, which is obviously not ideal. The one size fits me pretty well, but if I make it again, I will shorten the straps because they're just a little bit overly long for me. You can tie this top in different ways. I'll make sure to put in some clips of me tying it in different ways, so I think that's fun. The pattern basically calls for you to use one layer of fabric and then do fold over hems or bias tape to finish it. And that's fine, but I do think this fabric is a little bit thin, and if I make this again, I would just line it, and then all of my outside seams could be finished just by lining it, sewing all along the outside, and then flipping it right sides out. So I think I would definitely line it in the future, also for just a bit more opacity in the chest area. As it is right now, it's a pretty thin piece of material, so if you wanted to go braless, it's just a little bit thin. So I think next time I would line it. Overall, this pattern was super, super quick. I was happy to use up some of my scraps I had of this bamboo rib knit fabric, and I would see myself making it again, maybe with some minor modifications, but overall this project went really well and I was really happy with it. So it was just a simple, easy summer sew. Okay, next up is another summer dress, and if you saw my fabric haul video back in the spring, you might remember me talking about this fabric and how badly I wanted to sew it up into a dress, so I finally did that. This is the Fiber Mood Lucille dress pattern. I purchased the Fiber Mood magazine about a year ago, which has all the patterns printed on paper in the magazine, and you basically just trace them all off so you can get the pattern that you want. I graded from a size 40 at the bust to a 38 at the waist and a 36 at the hips based on their size chart. But I was a little bit confused on their size chart because they said this was drafted with negative ease in the waist and that just sounded horrifying to me. <laughs> like I just think with a cutout, I would not want it to be digging in too much. So I was a little bit worried about that. Now, <laughs> this dress was really challenging to make, mostly because when I traced off the fiber mood pattern, I failed to realize that you need to add your own seam allowance. So I cut out the fabric using a pattern that had no seam allowance, and I think you know how that story goes. It ended up being too small, so I had to get creative. I recut some skirt panels and I sewed my top pieces with as small of a seam allowance as possible. And I saved the day. I would say this dress just fits me, especially in the waist. If I sit down at all or bend over, I do kind of get a tummy roll where that little cutout is and that's not really the look I'm going for. So overall, I love this dress because I had such a vision for this. I love how the fabric goes with it, and I love the stripe placement I did in the skirt. I did some horizontal and vertical stripes, which I really like. It is a little bit of a bummer that it's borderline too small, but I would definitely make this dress again. You can tie it in different ways. I think just next time I make it, I would make sure to add the seam allowance on so that it turns out to be the right size. It goes without saying too that working with a slippery, thin fabric like this can be challenging and I did get some runs in this dress even though I was using a sharp needle and everything but it was just kind of hard to work with. My other gripe with this is the waist. They just have you finish this opening in the waist with a little bit of a facing which I really don't like. It's flipping out all over the place. I think if I was going to make it again, I would finish this waist piece with bias tape and I would reinforce it with something. I did add some elastic into mine, but I kind of did a bad job. So I think if I did it again, I would use bias tape and I would reinforce it with a little bit of elastic because then you get that tight look you want, but it wouldn't be 
so tight and uncomfortable it would have a little bit of stretch. But out of all the dresses I've made this summer, I've actually worn this one a lot because it dresses down really well, but it also dresses up well. I just think it goes with a lot of things because it has the white and the black in it, so you can pair it with different items. And yeah, I'm super happy with this dress. I would definitely make this pattern again, but I would just need to cut it out properly next time. Okay, next up is a project I made earlier this spring. It's this really fun floral fleece sweater. And you might remember this fabric from my spring fabric haul. I got this beautiful floral fleece from a shop called My Little Fabric Shop. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was destined to make a sweater like this. I used um, a pattern from Etsy, it's by a company called Sasha Crafts, and it's their Greta sweater pattern. I did actually sew it up in a size extra large just because I wanted it to be extremely oversized and I was worried that it looked super cropped on the model. I just wanted an oversized fit and I definitely got that. I'm pretty happy with the final fit of the sweater. The one issue I would say is like the sleeves are ridiculously long. They're so long. I think at some point I will go ahead and cut the bottom of the sleeves off and add the cuff and just make it a little shorter because they're so long. I used a rib knit for the bottom of the sweater, the cuffs of the sleeves, and then I also decided to use it for this kind of yoke um, collar situation in the front. And I'm so glad I did because I just think this gives it such a unique look. I really like the contrast between the fluffy fleece and then the rib knit. The other thing I did with this is that I used a metal zipper and I did replace the zipper pull with this kind of customized circle zipper pull, which I really love as well. And I just feel like having this circle zipper pull makes it look so modern. I'd been seeing a lot of zipper pulls like this in stores on these sweaters that had this kind of yoke and collar. So I think I really got like a modern and current look just by doing that one small detail. The other thing I did is I lined it in a lightweight fleece just because the underside of this floral fleece was not super soft and fluffy. So I wanted something fluffy against my skin. And I think the lining worked out really well. It ended up being really, really warm because there's two layers of fleece. So it's super warm, it's super fluffy, it's super thick. Because of that, it almost turned into more of like a jacket than a sweater. I don't see any situation where I could wear this inside even in the middle of winter, I just feel like I would be so hot wearing this inside. So it's definitely better for walking around outside and staying warm on those cold fall and winter days. I wore it so much in early spring when I finished making it. So happy to have it and it's just something that I'll get a lot of wear out of. It's very practical, but it's also really cute and I'm really proud of it. Okay guys, I saved the best for last. Last up is my beautiful, beautiful dress I made for Toronto Frocktails. The Toronto Frocktails event was earlier this year in May, and I decided to kind of go all out and make my own custom dress for it. And I was really inspired by all of these kind of princessy ball gowns with these floral garden-y prints on them that I see on Instagram. I follow a few brands like Tuota Matoshi, and her work really inspires me. So I thought it would be really fun to make my own kind of like princess garden dress because, you know, if you have the excuse, why not? So to make this dress, I used the Rose Cafe Bustier pattern as a base for this corset top, but I did modify it significantly to get it to fit me properly. I modified the corset part as well as the actual cup. I did several different fittings to get the look I wanted. The top has boning in it. It was my first time using boning. The skirt is a circle skirt, has several layers of tulle, and then the underneath lining fabric is just a really pretty kind of nude pink color. There is a little waist tie that I used to tie around my waist just to cinch it in, and then there's these shoulder ties as well, which are just this beautiful pink ribbon, and there's a shoulder tie on either side. The back has a zipper closure, and it kind of fades nicely into the bottom of the skirt. So I do have a whole video coming about the process of making this. It's taken me longer than I wanted to edit it. I just feel like I got a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of footage I have, but that will be a two-part series coming fairly soon, so I don't want to go too much into this dress right now and I'm not going to try this one on for you because I really want you to watch that video so you can just wait and see me try it on in that video. Okay guys that is everything I made this summer. Not quite as many projects as I had planned on making but that's okay. Sometimes summer just gets in the way and you want to do other things so I only sewed a few things this summer but I am really happy with what I made. I'm already starting to think a little bit about fall sewing and I will definitely share all of my fall sewing with you on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you never miss another video from me. Okay guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.